Hey everybody, happy new year from us at Sick to Fit. How are we here with Josh? How's it going? Hey, what's up? Yeah, you're doing a lot of driving today, huh? Happy new year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. just yeah. running errands per the huge. So you're doing, you're doing work. I am. Uh -huh. And you, but I noticed that you got a run in. I did. Uh -huh. So <laughs> I did sleep late also. I slept late this morning. Uh, we stayed up late last night. We uh, did fireworks and had a good time with the family around a barn fire. Had to did the thing and uh, and uh, slept a little. Slept in this morning. I I, I knew I was going to run. My friend and I we had texted last night, so I already had the run planned. But I told him I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sleep till daylight tomorrow. <laughs> and so <laughs> we did. And I just kind of put off all the things that I needed to do a little bit later in the day because it was kind of a slow day anyhow. Uh -huh. But yeah, I damn sure got up and I got my run in this morning. I really could, I couldn't wait to get up and get my run in this morning. I was excited to. I was excited to. Mm. Yeah, what what I wanted to ta help people uh, with today of all days is like you know, okay, today is the first day of a new year. We can make our resolutions, and I want to talk specifically to the folks who've downloaded the book, read the book, listened to the book, joined the Facebook group, and haven't really done anything yet. And yeah. so like today is like the day like, oh, I better do it today or else I should probably wait till 2021. <laughs> right. Let's like what do, what do we want to say to folks that's gentle and kind and supportive and also enough of a kick in the ass to maybe help somebody start moving? Yeah, the, like the. Um, a rep. Are you a New Year's resolution is really just like a conversation starter. It's just a, it's just words. It's just a thing that people do. It's a thing to participate in. And we've all been participating in words our whole life. And I just encourage people to let this not be that, you know, sick to fit is something that's very close and near and dear to my heart and your heart. It means doing something very small word, but very powerful. Don't do. So what I would encourage a person to do differently in their life, maybe this year, uh, above and beyond the exercise and diet and all that stuff is do more than you say. Like, I, I am super excited about people going, you know what? I want to do a thousand pull-ups this year, but you know, I mean, if you haven't done a pull up in 20 years and you weigh 500 pounds, that's not really the thing to be. That's not really the thing to be latching on to, even though it sounds amazing. And you're going to encourage people to come to your doubtful self's rescue. So mm -hmm. what I would encourage you to do is. Is. Rather than look for the big grandiose thing, while you do need to be, you know, drawn towards something, I as boring as it sounds, like to focus on consistency on a daily basis of doing some do doing something about it more than we say something. About, oh, I'm on a diet this year. Stop saying that. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, such and such is my New Year's resolution. Stop. Prove that that's your New Year's resolution by fucking doing that. To be the be, be it. I don't know how I know it. I know I struggle with articulating it, but that's the difference in my life has been less about the words and more about the action. <laughs> Right. And since since we're a social media platform and uh, like people, it's very easy for us to encourage each other to be kind to say, hey, yeah, a thousand pull ups. You got this where we believe in you. And then it's the end of the year and you've done seventy nine. We can say, oh, man, you tried. Good try. Keep, you know, keep up. Uh, keep up appearances. Keep going keep for it. Up. That's seventy nine more than I did. and All of these types of things. But you're not you're not really getting anywhere. And 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 that's the point is to really break it down to those bite sized pieces that aren't baby steps. This isn't baby's work. This is not a baby's work. This is grown folks. 
but break it down into bite-sized pieces. Just like my Bam Bam used to always say about a big job was, you, you know, we're going to tag this the way you would eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Another thing that he used to always say is, ain't no hill for a stepper. That just means one step at a time. Don't get, don't worry about step 57 when you're on step two. And so that's like to be next step oriented, to be awash with that, um, that sentiment in your mindset. Like I'm not worried about the big grandiose promises that get me all sorts of likes and kudos on social media. Um, because that can get you caught into this, in, in this very hard to shake funk faking because the funk faking gets really enabled with social Mm -hmm. media right it's like it's like it becomes a another another dopamine rush that doesn't help you it's the same as you're addicted to snickers bars and po boys you can get addicted to other people's reactions to your image Absolutely. And there's no doubt. So before people call me out and go, yeah, Josh, what up? Like, there's no doubt that I am drawn to that myself. There's no doubt that I post things on social media and and I do get excited when there's attention, when there's likes, especially as an expat person. I understand the draw of that. It's like a moth to flame. That's why I am being so adamant about It's so precious that you need to be careful with it. Let it draw you in the right direction instead of the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? I I don't know if I, if I fully, because what I mean by that is you can get the likes and the encouragement from folks with words alone. We like, you see it done a lot, but what really gets likes and encouragement from folks that I've noticed and not only gets you likes and en- likes and encouragement, but draws like minded folks to you. So you start to a- accumulate this organic pack around you is posts about what you already did mm. and the consistency of the things you did. Yeah. And that's right. that's so important that if you that you you can get likes and comments and and hearts and all that f- all different ways and the same the same way is like when, when i you know got into business i was like here's a whole bunch of ways you can market yourself you can go for scarcity you can tell people oh, there's only three left there's only right and you'll get us you'll get that works right you'll get people with that or you can you can you know create fear of missing out in them and you'll get people like that but you're i found you don't get people you want to work with and so no. if, if you're doing likes and um, and comments and all on social media approval from and you're getting it from people who want to watch you fake so they can continue to fake, that's going to be your average. That's then you're you're stuck much worse than if you were just home on the couch alone, not doing anything, because now you've got a community that is almost they're, they're enabling your um you know you're you're prancing as opposed to dancing yeah you're, they're enabling your like a term we would call in football lackadaisicalness <laughs> you know it, coach would say you're being lackadaisical you're kind of just going through the motions you're here you're showing up you got your pads on but you ain't really doing shit you ain't really grinding and pushing the forward edge of capacity and trying to make us better as a unit. <laughs> You're just here wearing the jersey, tucked into your jeans on Friday, all excited, all excited, you know, but you're not really pulling on that rope hard. Wait, what do you say? Pushing on the forward edge of capability? Yeah, your capacity. Capacity. Yeah? I right. like that. I'm writing that down. Uh-huh. It's not. Yeah, it's not about four or five iterations away from your capacity and trying to fake the funk to pretend to be that. It's about consistently leaning a shoulder into the forward edge of your capacity, the capacity you have today, and doing it with consistency over time through the hard shit. That's what's impressive. That's what gets you organic community that's going to help bring you 
to your promised land and not help you stay on a carousel. Right. So, and, and that's something that you can't uh, you can't calibrate based on other people. Right. Your forward edge of your capacity. Right. You talk. It's not baby steps for somebody. The forward edge of their capacity might be walking to the mailbox and back. Yeah. Right. And once you get that and now you're like, you know, now the thing you don't want to do is go, hey, I'm going to do a whole year of walking to the mailbox and back once it's no longer the forward edge. Right. <laughs> That's, that's exactly right. Like, right. I did so damn good in kindergarten. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to be the oldest. I can kindergarten right now. Man, I'm a grown ass man. Colors, shapes, numbers. I got it all. Exactly. Right. And, and there's worlds in which we get celebrated for that. Absolutely. Right. On Instagram and Facebook. Absolutely. And pe people can set up entire businesses. Right. Based on based on that dynamic is it just feels so damn good. Yep. Right. And, you know, I think this is this is, um, you know, way, way ahead for folks that were who are like, look, I'm just starting out. I don't have an Instagram account based on my performance, but it can happen. It happens awfully quick. Yeah. Right. Because it, because it can snowball. And what, what I want. Well, we encourage we encourage everyone in the book to to, you know, to start out to to really jump on Strava, I know that we're very we, in Strava. Strava ain't Facebook, and it ain't it ain't it ain't Instagram. Mm. You know that's the thing. If you want to post on Strava, you better have sweated. That's that's how you post on Strava. That's what I love about it. You know, and so let's start there, right? Right, and so yeah, so I think you know, I, I in the New Year's post today, I encourage people like post what you've done. And if you mm -hmm. haven't done anything, go do something because you're go do something. right. Your forward edge could be three minutes. I mean, you and your I, forward edge could be just doing something instead of thinking about doing something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know? Like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to work out at the gym more and I've discovered there are many things that are way past my forward edge of capacity that are to take far less than three minutes. Exactly. I think about Tim. I think about Tim all the time talking about how his first like set of goals as a as a physical goal was to just get up out of the office chair that he was sitting his big ass in without mm -hmm. using the arms All right. and that's that's tim kaufman of fat man rants tim, yeah tim kaufman of fat man rants yeah. my brother right and by the way he just put his cookbook on online for free he sure did so, posted uh, it on so on uh he's got the PDF you can download it print it up have it in your kitchen. Okay. Um, what were we saying? I had something. Forward edge of capacity is what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like I watched um, Game Changers, and yeah. and they got t you know James Wilkes doing battling ropes for like an hour and ten minutes, and we've got that at my gym. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do the battling ropes. The first time I tried it, <laughs> thirty seconds. That's about all I got. Yeah, I'm now, I'm now up to a minute and 15 seconds. I do it three times and I notice that once I reach like I have a countdown timer, once it reaches 45, I am whimpering. Yeah, like, like a child who needs a change. You don't think three minutes is a long time. Get in a plank position. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right. And you know what? If you can't do a ground plank, do it from your knees or do it on a wall. Right. Like you or, just, or just uh, something as simple because I know my 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 habits with my body. Just sit in a chair and consciously take your back off of the back of the chair and sit on your sit bones and engage your core and sit with a stacked spine and make your core hold you upright. Just little simple things, you know. Right. And, you know, another simple thing we were talking to someone on, on the website is just drinking water. Right. Like you haven't drunk water. OK, so don't just say I'm going to drink water. Make a plan. Make a plan as if drinking water was part of your job that you were going to get assessed on at performance review time. Like mm -hmm. you wouldn't just go, oh, I have to write that report and then like not start a file for it. Not put you know it in what the I calendar. do because I often go and I'm reading this liver book about dehydration and how we get chronically dehydrated today in modern age because we're so busy 
and we just we just don't drink so we're just sort of chronically moderately dehydrated all the time so i've been trying to stay stay vigilant on that and what i do is when i think about it rather than go, buy a bottle of water and go oh i need to make sure that i get six or eight of these in me a day i'll just buy an entire gallon jug and carry it around with me like one like a meathead at the gym just as a constant reminder that yes i'm trying to get i'm trying to get more water in me today you know simple things if you've never done that before do that tomorrow that's simple let's let's start flirting with moving that that bubble of your capacity by leaning against the forward edge of it right and then the other thing i want to say is that we, everybody fears that moment that day when i'm just not motivated right I, yeah i call it the um d gas the days where i don't give a shit and i was like oh oh that day came oh well josh and howie nice to know you tail yeah. tucked i'll see you i'll see you later it didn't it didn't work again yeah. And the first thing I want to say about that is like, that's how that's your daily double, right? <laughs> when you have one of those days and you get and you do your one minute plank or you eat an apple or you have a leaf of lettuce or you, you fill your water jug like that's all that that really accelerates progress. Those so right. those those days are not only inevitable, they're not only necessary, they are treasures. They are treasures. And 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 just and so to me, you know, I'm a football fan. I take I think of it as L's and W's, wins and losses. And we're gonna have L's, we're gonna take losses. It doesn't mean we have to go around with a losing record. You know, Tom Brady and Drew Brees, they're not worried about never losing a game. It's about the record in the balance. What do my results look like? I still have bad days. You know it, Howie, because you're one of my best friends and I lean on you and I vent to you. I still have rough days. So the peaks and valleys are there for everyone. They don't disappear. But what I think I've worked on is what we talk about at, at what we talked about at our last sick to fit retreat was the amplitude. You know, we talk the peaks and the valleys. I've just been able to 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 just sort of squeeze them down a little bit. My valleys aren't aren't quite as bad as they used to be. And my peaks are a little bit more level headed than they once were, because I know that this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the good thing will pass just as bad, just as surely as the bad thing will pass. That has helped me a lot in my life to understand that, oh, it's shitty in the moment right now, but I know all I gotta do is keep stepping keep biting. I'm going to get through it. I don't have to get exacerbated and throw my hands up in the air and blow the whole thing up, kick the whole Lego project over and stomp it into the carpet because I messed up once. Right. And we have that. We have that ability. It's in eight. It's in eight in us. That's how we learn to tie our shoes. That's how we learn to walk. That's how we learn to play an instrument. If you know how, that's how we learn the rules of football. So we have that capacity. We just refuse to use it on on things sometimes because it's more comfortable to do it another way. It's more comfortable to have a good reason to blow it all up and go back to Oreos and Doritos. Right, right. So, so like, like the, the final steps there is assess and adjust. Right. So mm -hmm. we're we're taking drama out of it. We're taking self. I, we're taking identity out of it. We're taking everything out of it except like that little part of your brain that wants to be an accountant. And for, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's a very tiny part of my brain. Some people, you know, have more of that. The, the kind who just wants to like check the numbers and make sure the, the profits and loss count balance, like just go, OK, how did this do? Did this work? And then be extremely pragmatic about, well, you know what? I thought one minute was good, but actually 30 seconds is something that that is more appropriate. That's the forward Adjust. Right now. Adjust. That's exactly right, Howie. Adjust. So here's a point. Here's another football analogy, if you don't mind. I'm in very, very much a football mood right now. Mm. But we did something in defense called pursuit angles. It was something we practiced, right? So if I'm in the middle of the football field and someone breaks breaks off a run and is running up the sidelines, 
I'm not going to run straight at him or I will miss him terribly. Mm -hmm. I have to take the long way. I have to take an angle to aim to where my speed will take where I think my speed will match where he's going to be. You see, mm -hmm. so I, if you put, I don't I don't know that much about football, but but it, I, I see all that like the show, the plays that you get shown at the gym on Monday morning are the exciting, the long runs. And I think I see defensive players fuck this up all the time, all the time. You hear it. You hear the commentators say, oh, he took a bad angle. Don't take a bad angle. Stop taking bad angles. We take. It's okay to take a bad angle, but you see it on film and you course correct because coach chewed your ass. And you're like, damn, I don't want to take that angle again because you think you're better than you are. You try to cut the angle to catch him at a at a two or three yards um, more back, uh, more down, more upfield, right? You try – so you, because you wanted to stop him two or three yards sooner, you missed him altogether because you mm -hmm. took a bad angle. And that's all it is. We're constantly taking angles on what it is we're trying to hit. And we're taking bad angles, and it's okay to take a bad angle, just course correct. Only a dumbass keeps doing it over and over. That guy's going to get cut. Right. Simple. Right. And it's, and it's a matter of, I mean... I, I imagine the the algebra of it, the geometry of it is simple. It's the head game, yeah. right? It's the ego mm -hmm. getting in well, the way. Well, if I take this, given this angle, this is the angle I think I need to take. If I take this angle, I doesn't. I don't. I'm not quite sure I'm going to catch him before he hits the pylon, before he gets to the goal line. So what you do instead is you shorten your angle and think and tease yourself into thinking you're faster than you are and you just miss him and die for his ankle and miss it miss the tripping tackle rather than committing to what you knew you were capable of and making that touchdown saving tackle at the half yard line like i've seen malcolm jenkins do in a saints game against the buccaneers sorry matt buckner but it's the truth he caught the guy at the one yard line and guess what we did we held him they went for it on all four downs and didn't get shit out of it Right. That was beautiful to me. I get all these life lessons out of football. I'm telling you, man. And, uh, but it's, it speaks volumes. Don't quit. Take the correct angle. So so just just in, uh, interpreting that for for us. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it's a constant adjustment. So. So. I see whole food plant based as a thing I want to do. I see it as something that's that I I have found evidence that makes me think that's the place to be. However, I'm living in eat fried chicken every day land. The pursuit angle necessary for me to hit whole food plant based depends on my capacity. It depends on where I'm standing on the field. It depends on what I tell myself I can get done. Right. So there's there, there's days when there'll, there's days when you will relax your standards so that they don't fall apart completely. Yeah. Oh, this is a good. We got a great comment from Elizabeth. She says you think like an astrophysicist aiming for another planet. Yes. <laughs> exactly. How to hit the moon. Yeah. Yes. See, see that we we learn lessons and some was it the the, the Grateful Dead? Sometimes you see the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. That's right. Locker rooms and wormholes, baby. <laughs> All right, I think uh, that's that's what I wanted to cover today. I hope this is helpful for folks. Josh, thanks for uh, for for stopping your drive to to talk to everybody. Honored, love it. Glad All right, buddy. To, glad to talk. All right, buddy. Thank you, Howie. See you later. Peace.